<laughs> Next day. It was a school shooting joke. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad that's. <laughs> I'm glad that's where you're going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Just right onto the ground. <laughs> Just face full of dirt. Yeah. It's fine. <sighs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. Start he starts over. it when it's time to end something. No, no, hold on. Wait for the music. There you go. There you go. This episode is made possible by our therapy partners, Dirty B and Pickets. Pickets! From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. Uh, broadcast from Paterm, that's Jim. I'm Whitney, and that's Nick. It's time for some pod therapy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. So, we have, uh, we've got Anna in the studio. Hi. Hi, Anna. We're talking about the biathlon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she is a proud biathlete, and we support you, and I just want you to know that. <laughs> Appreciate that. This is a safe place, as Again, you can sell from the flag. Jim has already forgotten what the biathlon is. <laughs> yep. Jim, what sports it is? <laughs> but you have, Guns. you have, you've done some traveling. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, because, uh. Tell me where. Because you were in Italy when I talked to you. Yes. Right. For mental fit. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, yeah. This plug is how that. I got good yeah. at biathlon. Yeah, oh. I'm sure. Oh. Thank you. Nick, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Made you really it, fucking good. Wow. Biathlon yeah. Zoom session. Yes. Wow. yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. It's you cannot, bullshit, but I'll take it. Cannot <laughs> ski or fire a gun, but I'm sure he's the cause. It's the mobility. <laughs> when you're taking the gold, I, I hope that you thank him and God. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> so, but give us this update. Obviously, you're injured now. Yes. Um, but you were on. Team USA. Last two winters, yeah. Wow. Awesome. Dang. Yeah. And so what's what's the game plan moving forward? Do you, are you going to, I mean, with this injury, you're going to work through this a and long get back in it? still. Yeah, oh, I have a little coming. bit of ways to go. So I um, broke my knee and my ankle in a couple places playing soccer a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, was which, it indoor? No, it was outdoor, actually. <sighs> but it was on turf. Nice. Um which is kind of like my fun sport, like guilty pleasure. So I felt really kind of not good after injuring myself in that. How did the team feel? The coaches, um, were they a little... Uh... Yeah, I think my my coach was disappointed for me. Um, you know, just like felt sure. bad sympathy. Um, but I think she's going to help me work through it. And awesome. It'll be, it'll be all right. It just, it'll be a little tough probably to try to qualify this winter, at least for the first trimester of the international racing. But mm-hmm. um, hopefully by like December, I'll be... Feeling better again. And you were right. You said in the Patreon, uh, the U.S. has never won a medal in the biathlon. I know. It has yeah, to it's come the only It's the only Winter Olympic medal that the U.S. hasn't won one in. Yeah. Wow. That's the only one? I, according to my uh, three-second Google search, yes. Oh, wow. my God. I've never cared more about a team than I do The right only now. Winter Olympic event in which That's the U.S. My has never medal. Now. I want them to win this. It is one of Let's the most it. fun sports to watch in the Winter Olympics. This is the team it we should adopt. Is. It's, it's yeah. a lot of fun to watch the biathlon. That's what that's what the team needs is a, yeah. is a little push from Pod they Therapy. Need the pod therapy bump. <laughs> yeah. I think we send them guns. <laughs> the official, the official therapy them. podcast of the U.S. biathlon team. We should send them okay. pod therapy logos as targets. Oh, they're <laughs> redoing this. the logo right now. There it is. Oh, we got our shot. All right. Okay, I'm this back is in. Such a great idea. That's what they need. They need a, a, a D grade podcast to adopt them to 100%. victory. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Can you sponsor the team? Can, can you do that? Oh yeah, uh, we have sponsors. People will accept go money. Go on the headbands and all that. Okay. Mm. Oh my I like god. This. One could. Could we do it? Yeah. No. We don't know yet. Well, no. We haven't well, asked. We don't know their numbers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. We, we just, just send them shit. They might just wear it. <laughs> we just finished paying off the IRS. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> We're halfway to the next time yeah. we have to yeah, pay. We really got to <laughs> save up for the next I've, one. I've already started saving. I've got a little IRS pot set aside. <laughs> For yeah. when we do this and again. And for all of you that are thinking, wow, they make so much money that they have to pay a hefty tax. No, no, no. no. They're fines. We're <laughs> They're not fine. good at things <laughs> like filing. <laughs> so turns out the government does not have a sense of humor about that shit. Dang and, it. And uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently they're not listeners. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Not all the cool ones, anyway. <laughs> well, Anna, welcome. Uh, thank you for your That's support so throughout cool. the years and thank for listening you. to us. We're glad that you're here, even though it took chaos and disorder uh, to bring <laughs> you to fabulous Las Vegas. How long are you in town for? About a week. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Well, okay. So just doing the family thing? Or have you, yeah. you've been to Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, many times. Family's yeah. here. My dad do you have here. like a thing you've got to do that's like your tourist thing? Um, usually go to the Bellagio. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. there. Like to go to like a Cirque show usually. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, my sister actually went and saw Absinthe a couple months ago. All right. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah she enjoyed it. Of awesome. course, it is a good time. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, the Bellagio, I think, is underrated. So People classic. don't talk enough about the Bellagio. I st- every time I walk by that bar, I think. Oh, us? Yeah. 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 Oh, no, what does this look like? That's where oh. we got fired. That's where oh, we met. Oh. Yeah, he picked I was like, me up hmm. at a bar. No. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> I saw yeah. the gazing yeah, eyes. Yeah, he saw me <laughs> falling off a stool and was like, all right, I'm just going to make a move. And uh, <laughs> here we are. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. Okay. Seven years strong. Yeah. <laughs> Fun yeah. talk. Yep. Oh, uh, last uh, random announcement before we get to questions. I owe Jacob a special thank you. Yeah? Jacob. What? I mean, it checks out. Is responsible for my 18th anniversary gift to my wife. I hunted down the fucking textbook that Jacob oh. suggested I do. Okay, this is going a different we direction. Should, oh, we actually have to start God. by re-reminding Jacob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. It's a mold of Jacob's penis. That, okay. that was the entire bit. <laughs> Checks out. Yeah, so I had long ago told the story about how I uh, got my first date with my wife because she was taking a class at the university that I already taken, and she needed the book. And so she had asked around the friend group, does anybody have this book? And I was like, I do. Uh, I'll give it to you if you take me to coffee. And she was like, all right. And so now we're married for 18 years. And I told that story a long time ago, and Jacob was like, hey, man, uh, the obvious move at some point for an anniversary gift is oh, yeah. find that fucking book. And I was like, oh, my God, I wonder if I could. It took me months. I had to, like, go to the registrar, to the school library, to the music department. Aww. I shook every possible tree. I finally got this thing. And then it's really hard to find that version. It's just 20 years old. Just figuring out what book it was was impossible. I finally figured out. Then I hunt down the internet, find Lucky a copy had gotten of it. hold of it already. I'm sure. Yeah. Then uh, I decided, okay, I got book the book. Joke. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that took me a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I get a hold of the book, and I did like a little presentation case, like, you know, made it pretty to hang up and stuff. Then I thought, oh, shit, I wonder if the author's still alive. He is. Okay. I got a hold of him. No, and I was no. like, hey, man, your book like changed my life like in this other way. <laughs> not, not the way, not not the way, not the way you wrote it for, but it was useful. And uh, I was like, would, would you be like able to write something in it for me? And he was like, yeah, man, absolutely. So after... I bet he doesn't get hit up for... Uh, oh, no, he loved you know, it. Uh, yeah, the, the, the personalized autograph. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just put my standard message in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah anniversary, no problem, man. <laughs> no, but super Hope you sweet enjoyed guy. physical science. <laughs> 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 so super sweet guy, and he wrote a little inscription and everything, and, and uh, we just celebrated, so it was really cool. So, oh, nice. Jacob, so she, thank you for the idea. So you gave it to her? I did. Yeah. So yeah, we well, just celebrated the 18th anniversary uh, yesterday. Did I get Congrats. credit with the with your wife? I did. Yeah. She, she knew because I stupidly the day that you had said it, I had come home that day and said, "Haha, Jacob thought that'd be a cool idea." And she was like, "God, that would be a cool idea." <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <sighs> I just you were an idiot. God, I know. It, was, it was like. Yeah. Well, something had to not work. Yeah. 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 Right? I mean, uh, it was just too good. Yeah. had to fuck yeah. it up sometimes. But it was like a long time ago. It was probably like a year ago that Women Jacob remember. said that. And, and <laughs> we like, remember everything. It was a long time ago. So luckily, it was not top of mind. <laughs> so, just, okay. So, I, wouldn't you, Whitney, if Peter came up to you <laughs> and was like, I had, somebody told me the greatest idea to get for you for a gift. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'd be like, wow. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been, been great. Idea. <laughs> I sure would have been surprised if you had done that. That would have been incredible. Well, anyway, it looks so lovely. I imagine the look on her face when she opened it was like, "Oh, oh yeah, this is that thing." I remember that there's Jacob that said to do this, that, right? The surprise was Jacob's <laughs> yeah. penis. The yeah, mold. that's right. Well, the mold of Jacob's yeah, penis so, yeah. was appreciated. She put it next to her other mold of yeah. Jacob's. Oh, penis. Oh, okay. Do you want me to also do an inscription in the book? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah just just an imprint. Uh, it would be lovely. An imprint. <laughs> <laughs> My mushroom stamp of approval. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's getting real. And if you're thinking, wow, this show has really hit the ground. Nope. Go back and <laughs> listen Patreon. to Patreon. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the high road. And I didn't do it. <laughs> Way up there. Me? Yeah, no, it's the person you don't think it is. Yep. <laughs> it's that one. <laughs> Patreon.com slash therapy. Tune in over all the fun. Well, welcome, Anna. We're excited to have you. Uh, feel free to chime in whenever you damn well please. You know how the show yes. works. There's no Thank order. You. We've got our great questions today. First one is an interesting one. I don't know that we've had its like. Uh, when to worry about auditory hallucinations. Hi, guys. My question is, how many times slash how often do I need to hear voices to actually worry about it? 
Backstory. A couple months ago, I'm a mid-30s female, was extremely stressed out at work. While at home one night, I laid down with my head on my pillow and heard a very distinct <laughs> Even voice. Even when he slowed down to try to get it right. Yeah. No, I, I just... Fuck you. That's where we need to go with that. I, it, It's pillow. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with how I'm saying it. It's fine. You're, you're insulting. Say the word, say the word P-I-L-L. No, I won't play your say goddamn the word P-I-L-L. game. Pill. And say the word O-W. But that don't work all the time in English, <laughs> Say man. the word O-W. Like, say the word O-W. Ow. Ow? Oh. oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. No, you know oh. what? Let's do yours. That ain't O-W. O-W's oh, ow. Oh, sorry. Uh, O-H. They'll, okay, but that ain't how it's spelled. I, so agreed. your stupid <laughs> rules agreed. are failing. No, no. I said the wrong thing. Say O-H. O. Oh. Say P-I-L-L. Pill. Put them together. Pill O. Good. Pill O. He's like the AI Let's version like of Pill yeah. O. <laughs> Let's do it like that. I laid down with my head on my Pill O and heard a, dis- a very distinct voice whisper in my ear, I'm going to kill you. Oh. I knew immediately that it was a hallucination because the cats were in a different room. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well done. Solid different logic. Time. <laughs> yeah. You clearly weren't that afraid of the pillow. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that, Fluffy? <laughs> so I wasn't scared of the voice, but I was scared of the implications. Do I just attribute this? You know what? This writer, writer fuck is you. Awesome. I'm starting yeah. to pick up on something. <laughs> I love oh, I'm starting to ask some fucking questions here. <laughs> Dang it, they didn't sign Do up. I just attribute this to the stress and lack of sleep, or should I seek out medical advice? It hasn't recurred. Potential relevant family history. I have a sibling who sometimes hears voices, and the voices went away when they were prescribed an atypical antipsychotic, catiapine in this case, off-label for insomnia. No diagnosis of schizophrenia or a related disorder to my knowledge. No mentions of hearing any voices in any of our family memoirs either. Thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you? Uh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, Anonymous. Well, I uh. thought that was a weird thing to say at the end. I thought, like, wow, your family has memoirs? <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow, uh, writer. I fucking walked into all these. That's, yeah. you're, you're, you are... <laughs> You are my hero, writer. Wow. <laughs> Whatever voices Slow you're clock. hearing, they're doing fine. Dude, I didn't even <laughs> catch like any of that. Every, Everything about you is, is just wow. winning. <laughs> I honestly, at the end, was like, that's so cool that their family has memoirs. Like, that's... <laughs> hey, good job. Not you all did of them it. Job. Yeah. Am I saying it memoirs, better now? You did yeah. That, yeah. that time, yeah. I got the first time You can't was overthink awful. it. <laughs> I'm good at talking. There's one thing I'm known for. It's the talking. Ooh, auditory hallucination. Yeah. Mild. You know, uh-huh. sporadic. And it, I've been more worried if if the writer said that the cat said it. That would I would be more concerned if it was actually yeah. it was the cat. Then yeah. we'd have problems. How often are they saying this time it wasn't the cat? And usually it is the cat. They just said, "Look, <laughs> I know it wasn't the cat." Yeah, I, <laughs> the cats weren't there. I, I took it as a joke. I, I know. Took it as I'm just joking. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so I remember way way back when um, being in grad school, the the vibe around auditory hallucinations is that if they I don't, don't want to be saying this in such a weird way yeah. it's a vibe it's, it's a vibe it's definitely a vibe or the, i don't want to say a rule cuz it's not a rule but just what how they explain it to us um the professors that i worked with they would say that if like anything if it's not affecting your life in right. a negative way um, and I tell clients this when they come in when I ask this question in our assessment because that can be kind of an intimidating question to ask. And mm-hmm. I imagine that um, somebody coming to see a therapist for the first time maybe is hesitant to admit to some of those things before sure. you know rapport is built. So I usually say something along the lines like, um, have you ever uh, had any experience with auditory or visual hallucinations, delusions, things like that? Um, and if I feel like there's hesitation, I will talk about how how we're looking at how it's impacting their their daily life. Right. So what I will say is, even if someone comes in and is like, yeah, I have, um, there's just a person right next to me here and they're talking to me all day long. They're like my imaginary friend, but you know, actually I hear them. Right. It, just like this, a voice outside of your head saying anything. Right. Um, my next question is gonna be, how does that affect you? And if they're like, oh no, it's great, I love right. it. I still go to work. I still go to school. I have good family life. I have a partner, whatever else, if if that's what they're into. So I, if it doesn't affect anything else, then I'm like. No, I'm glad you brought this okay. up. because It's been a long time, I think, since we've talked about it. In the first couple of years of the show, a lot of the questions we would get 
would somehow ask about a diagnosis. Mm. And we would constantly have to remind the listeners we're an educational program. We're not providing a second opinion or anything like that. But we would also educate the listeners about the importance of clinically significant amount of distress Mm -hmm. as one of the criteria for all the diagnoses. It's been a long time since we've been able to say that again, and I'm really glad you brought it up, that even with something like this, we're still looking for a clinically significant amount of distress, which goes to show that just because you're having some kind of experience every once in a while doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's a hard open and closed diagnosis. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think the other thing, too, is like um, we get this a lot, or at least I've had this question several times. Like, what's the difference between like an internal dialogue mm-hmm. versus an auditory hallucination? Very common. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you answer that question? Because like for me, I'm thinking like, well, my my go-to answer is like if you're thinking about this or wondering, then it's probably an internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. Like your internal dialogue you recognize as being your thoughts. I would say you I recognize would, it as being internal. Mm-hmm. I would I would have guessed that it would be it it's fooling your brain into that, that information is basically coming into your brain in the same manner that information comes in through your ears. But it's kind of tricking your brain. So it's like, oh, I that voice came from that area. That's my ear area of my, of my brain. Does that make sense? Right. No. Oh, because it's, so like you, well, you, cause you, it's you, all you're internal. hearing the voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so like if, if, it, if it feels like you're hearing it, then it, it would be an auditory yeah, hallucination. That, you, which, but if, it's just kinda, if you're thinking it, then it's yes. not that. Yes. Yes. So it's like it, it's, it's, it, you recognize it as it being external. Yeah. Right. So it's you can actually hear it. It is an external voice that you're hearing right. as opposed to being something internal that like you kind of recognize as being your thoughts, even though they may be intrusive mm-hmm. or you may feel like you don't have control over them. You do still ex- experience them as being internal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you guys ever when you were in school ever have to do like the simulation? Oh my gosh. Um <clears throat> I never had to do that, but I've I've watched videos of people doing that where it's like someone's just talking over your shoulder quietly while you're like say you and I are talking and Anna's over here just quietly on my right hand shoulder like saying whatever she wants to talk about by by Athlons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we actually she won't shut it. up about them. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we did it differently. We actually had uh, a headset Oh, that we would like to. an AirPod, but not because yeah. it was too long ago. Yeah, it, well, it settled down. It wasn't that long ago, all right? <laughs> but yes, it was a. I believe it was a Walkman. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a vinyl <laughs> <It> was a, <laughs> yeah, I a, I a record player that I would just carry around with me. <laughs> no, but we actually had to like put in headphones, and oh, then wow. like we would. We had an assignment where we had to listen to oh, this, my gosh. and it was a simulation of like uh, auditory hallucinations that someone with a schizophrenic diagnosis mm-hmm. would experience. And we had to walk through um, the union and we had to, there are certain things we had to do. Like we had to ask somebody for directions oh my gosh. someplace. We wow. had to, like there's a few different things, tasks that we had to accomplish. That's cool. It was tough. Yeah. yeah. It was really hard to walk around and like have a conversation with somebody because like we're hearing there were like four or five voices oh, all wow. occurring at the same time. Yeah. And they were, you know, coming from different areas and it just sounded really strange. It was tough. Or in things that draw your attention if it like makes a quick noise and you look, you yeah. know, like Yeah. I mean <laughs> Yeah, and there's some things that like as much as you try to just like, okay, I wanna appear as though I'm just listening yeah. to music. <laughs> You can do that as much as you want, but like at some point there is something like that that's yeah. just gonna startle you and you're just gonna be like, Well, yeah. Or just like, shut up. Oh, shut up. No one's talking to me. Yeah, That's just, cool. Yeah. So you went through that and did that mm-hmm. through your, wow. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. we did that in uh in. Uh, did you have undergrad. to like res- report on it or what was the. Yeah, so this was actually at, it wasn't for a class. It was oh. at a like a, uh, <clears throat> it was kind of like a conference type thing that we were at as students. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. That's cool. So yeah, it was just yeah. a one day experience. So to this question of like, how often would you be experiencing something before you start to get to a diagnosis? I like what you said, Whitney, of just making sure that there's always that clarity that symptoms of anything in mental health or any kind of abnormality don't always lead to a diagnosis. Like there's always a spectrum for everything. Being anxious is a common thing. It's not a diagnosable thing, but anxiety to the point of clinically significant amount of distress now becomes that. And so we have all these extra criteria. 
So when it comes to just having heard something, one thing I think that is important to talk about, and I was just looking up statistics, I remember it was it was actually bigger than you think. Five to 28 percent of Americans have experienced an auditory hallucination at wow. some point. And, and like you Better hear that and go, well, that's obviously nowhere. We're not talking about almost 30 percent of the nation having schizophrenia. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it is one of the most common I guess you might call it like atypical mental health symptoms that can be experienced. It, this happens to me like once a month. Okay. Yeah. But it's always, I'm always in bed, like very specific circumstances. Huh. Yes. And it feels more like a waking dream than like a, than what I would think of as a true hallucination. I want to zoom oh, in on that. It's like, that's it, a it, good point. I'm in bed and the writer yes. said that they're in bed when yeah. this happened. Uh, but like, if I'm in bed and I am just wiped out, yes. like if I've gone a couple of days without sleeping type yes. things. And uh, then this then this will almost always happen to me in those types of scenarios. I have had the same experience. Yeah. Is it just like I've a sound a or it's no, a it's, voice? No, it's usually voice. Okay. It's usually yep. uh, okay. one or more voices. Yep. Oh, wow. And so I've, I have sometimes like full on conversations. In full really? exhaustion. Yeah. I've been in that same state, laying in bed, completely exhausted, and clearly heard a voice. Yeah. Talking. And there are other times wow. like I will be sitting there or you're know, lying in bed. And I'll hear it, and it will scare the shit. Like, yes. it will well, yeah, me. that's all I'm yes. thinking. Yeah. That and like, I will, and I will, like, yes. jump up or jump out of bed. Uh, uh, not you, not all the time, but every now and then, yeah. it'll it'll really uh, so surprise me. Why that's important is because that thirty percent or up to like on the high end twenty percent of people, which I've realized five to twenty eight is a very big range, but yeah, you know, these are difficult statistics to also get at. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stigma associated with it. Like even when we're talking to a patient, Mm -hmm. they're here for our help. Mm -hmm. We still have to walk on eggshells to talk about this sort of stuff. But this form that Jacob and I have experienced, and probably the writer as well, Mm -hmm. is a very common form that's called, um, I believe it's audio hypnagogic uh, hallucinations, which have to do with sleep. So Mm -hmm. that transition cycle from like that conscious brain into that unconscious brain this is the most common uh, situation in which somebody would hear an audio hallucination. Yeah. Like I talked to my doctor about it years ago, and uh, that's what they said. They were like, basically, yeah. you're dreaming and you're not asleep yet. That's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's essentially it. Yeah. Which, I mean, really, it, as uh, I appreciate that it can be startling. I appreciate hallucinations of any kind can, can make people scared. But, I mean, really appreciating the power of your brain to create fiction you know, and like what dream states are and, and the way it replays memories and the way you hear tone and voice and all these things. Yeah. Like it has it all ready to go and it can just fictionally create that at any time. Yeah. And that's essentially what this is. Should the writer be worried about what the voice is saying? Obviously, so that's pretty uncomfortable. You. Yeah, that's pretty uncomfortable. I mean, the cat's not in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as the cat doesn't start like, as long as practicing not karate the in the garage. Well, and what else would you expect from a cat? I mean, the cat of course that's what they the would say. Was gonna try to kill if you. the cat can talk, that's what the cat said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, if, if you've got fucking Doolittle powers, we all you know heard that cat well accurately. That, like, the difference between a house cat and a tiger is just the size. size. Yeah, that's it's it. It's not the attitude, yeah, no. it's not the desire to murder <laughs> no. things, yeah. it's just the ability yeah. to do the murder. That's it, that's all it is. They're all fucking monsters. Yeah. Cats yeah. and birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if birds were just, if, if like a pigeon was 50 pounds, yeah. then human They're beings would be your extinct. eyes out, they're taking your fucking <laughs> yeah. shit. We'd just yeah. all be dead. Yeah, that's 100% true. Yeah, I mean, the the nature of the, the what the voice said... <laughs> It's difficult because, again, distress matters a great deal, but also situation and, like, where this voice is imposing. And, and again, if you're experiencing what are probably auditory hypnagogic hallucinations, that's extremely common and, in theory, benign. Well, and, and so that, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Like, it, and if that's the situation, it's no different, really, than, like having a dream of being chased. Right. Or it's right. just it's just your anxiety kind of manifesting itself into a right. dream state. Um and it, which is different than like um having schizophrenia and hearing right. voices like this because those voices are always negative. Right. Right. No one ever there's I don't think ever been a case of somebody who has schizophrenia and their voices are just like Yeah. You're rocking it today. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Go <laughs> I don't believe in you. <laughs> it's just Richard you. Simmons yeah, I mean, the whole oh, time. Oh, You're doing it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too, too soon. soon. Going. Too soon. That was not appropriate. <laughs> oh sorry. Um but You're no, right. I think I I, I 
I think the, uh, you know, the, the negativity, like that's the worst part, I think, of like yeah. hearing those voices. Like yeah. when we did that simulation, it wasn't just that there were five different voices going on. Right. It was all really yeah tough like yeah. it was like saying some very hurtful things yeah uh, it's almost always distressing i'm all right though I'm yeah good. Aww, good. i'm not therapy? very good at golf <laughs> <Not very> good. <laughs> caitlin clark is mediocre <laughs> at best. No, 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 no 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 i've you know that we're done with that <laughs> that was his line that's it but the school yeah. shooting jokes <laughs> on the fucking table <laughs> don't you touch caitlin <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah so we all have news. our limits do you want me to make fun of caitlin clark or laura Oh, yeah. Those are the options. Defend one. <laughs> can I get back to it? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Okay. No, that's good. I'm glad you're taking yeah. your time. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. It's a big commitment. I don't rush this. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. I get it. There's no reason to take, <laughs> <laughs> take your time. So the good news writer, um, you know, again, we do not diagnose on the show. We do not undiagnose on the show. Uh, we always refer you back to your own treatment team. And if this is something that, you know, is recurring and, and happening in your life and you'd like to examine it more, um, you can. I've I've read in some places that... If you are having this, um, you might want to go get whatever it's called, like an EEG, the anterior encephalogram or whatever. It's it's basically a neural hearing test. So you'd go to an audiologist for it. Right. Um, oh, because okay. sometimes if you're developing hearing loss, you can oh, actually get okay. hypnagogic hallucinations as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes that, that can be worth doing, but... I mean, I do want to normalize it. And, yeah. and like hearing voices isn't just reserved for people with psychotic features or schizophrenia, there's support groups out there. Like I remember um, at NAMI, there was a, a group just, it was just called hearing voices, you know, to just make sure everybody got it. Like mm -hmm. this is what it's for. Um, but obviously a very wide spectrum of what that is. And there were a lot of first timers that would come wandering in and say, look, I, I'm not, whatever the movie depiction is of the bad yeah. guy holding a knife, which again is thanks right. Hollywood. That, yeah. yeah fuck you. Yeah. But they're really scared to talk about it and get yeah. help because it's, it's in that range of shit that people like everybody mm -hmm. could talk about anxiety. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's kind of charming. You're scared. Okay. Whatever depression. Everybody's like, Oh boy, I get it. You know? And even some of these other things that we've all normalized by talking about mental health, this is still in that category. That's like the black box of shit. We don't talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most, I think mostly because of, Hollywood. Fucking and Hollywood. It's like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. The the bad guy in the movie killing everybody doesn't have a fucking eating disorder. You yeah. know, it's going to be this shit. So it's, it's sad. But writer, I'm glad for questions like this. A, because I think we can normalize the experience. B, we can add a few extra layers of understanding. Um, C, we can, it gets us a chance to talk about how diagnostics work. And, and D, I'm, I'm really glad because there's a lot of folks that have had some, I mean, fucking there's five people in this room and two of us were like, yep. I've experienced hearing voices, you know, that we're normalizing that. So I'm really glad that that's something we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, if you're hearing voices, always make sure you're not on meth. That, that could um, that's easily be part of it. Yeah. yeah. Or that you don't have earbuds in. Uh, step two. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. You want to rule out the obvious ones. Yeah. You get those off the table yeah. first. Thank you for the question, writer. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're talking about distant father passing away you're listening to pod therapy today's episode is brought to you by jake schneider judy schneider leanne kassab carolyn albert sammy scoop sarah smith mike helm darren cuttingham matt and lisa tangerman and mrs hot dog scoop if you would like to sponsor the show become a therapy producer at patreon.com slash therapy all right anna get your mic ready you're part of trivia all right. part of the deal here you can win glory for all the people in montana uh, you can have say on what whitney votes on in her next oh that's uh, hoa yeah. meeting you can win just dm me Gold fucking standard. I'm so excited. For I this. know the yeah, corruption. It's it's so uh, good. The corruption. <laughs> <laughs> corruption. Oh, I love it. You, <laughs> you understand? You have a you have an opportunity yeah. to establish that that is just your speech pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the meetings. <laughs> just, if you haven't said anything yet, just lean in on it and then just keep making references to Tail West. What do you mean, Jacob? Like, never clarify. <laughs> Thank you all so much for allowing me to be Together. at the board womb today. <laughs> today I want to talk about Tail West. <laughs> what? Tail West. <laughs> all, right. all right. Back to our trivia from Emma. What is the record-breaking amount in millions of dollars for the most expensive horse mm. ever sold? Oh, wow. Is this millions a, a buzz-in thing, or is this a, a, a price uh, choice? Right. I think this is going to have to be a price is right. Oh, yeah. wow. 
alive or dead? I think Good that's relevant. Question, Thank Jim. you. Thank you, Jacob. I think it's a very relevant question. King Tut's mummified horse. <laughs> goddamn right. You're goddamn right. That would be worth a shit ton of money. That would you be, know? Jim. You're right, Jim. Thanks, buddy. I'm backing you up on this Are one. Are we doing season five start affirming Jim no, shit no, no, again? No, no. <laughs> you know what? If the if the answer is it's a dead horse, I will give you points no matter what number you guess. Fair. Yeah, thanks, buddy. For I dollar amount. Th- All right, good. <laughs> you know lazy what? handy. And, and that goes for the rest of trivia. <laughs> if, if any of the <laughs> animals on auction are dead. Any of the answers are dead. Are dead, dead, a dead horse. Sure, Jim knows how to beat you a dead win. horse. There's okay. going to be a glue one, and I'm going to get that. <laughs> it's just a layup. <laughs> it's Europe. <laughs> All right, we're okay. betting on dead horse here. In the amount of millions, so it's got to be more than one million. All right, I'll start. I'll say... Two point three million. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go seven. All right. Wow. Closest without going over. Mm-hmm. We got two point three on the board and seven. Seven's way too fucking high. I was gonna go I way higher than know. seven. I, I was so. like, ooh. We're All right, going I'm just gonna take here. a clean five. I'll take five and All get right. in the middle of the pack. I kind of want to go close to Jim because he was so good before at this. I'm uh, very good at this. Yes. You can, you if can it's five dead, million if it's one. alive, no fucking clue. You can take five million one right now. Oh, All right, you I can got just five stick one. me. Damn it. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not 5.1, 5, 5 million and one. And one dollar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and one penny. <laughs> I'm going 10 because I just want going to. Going for the high ball. All right. All right. Whitney wins. What? Bitches. And is nowhere I was, I was going to guess 20 was my original guess. Oh. Still? What? Okay, but then you'll guess like seven. I was like, oh, what? that's not. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <gasps> Holy oh shit. God. 70 to 75 wow. million. Oh. oh. Alive? Oh, this is going <laughs> to be. Hold on. This is going to be like a uh, like a, a shawl or something that's like that. That's what I was that. already thinking, oh, yeah. like an Arabic, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. like Arabian uh, Okay, it just king. says the most expensive horse ever sold was a thoroughbred named Mr. Red. Jimmy. Something Pegasus. <laughs> oh, that feels right. Wings? Uh, who was that. sold for Wait. approximately seventy million dollars? <sighs> Damn! I didn't want to go over this. So. <laughs> well, if it's got wings, yeah, yeah. It's got it wings. alive. Yeah, How you many... left off the wings thing. That would that would change my numbers. If it was an angel, Fusashi Pegasus. Yes. God damn. Fusashi. Something like F U S A I C H I. It's like Gucci. Yeah. The Gucci of horses. Exactly. <laughs> How many pounds does an average adult? Living horse. Thank you. Way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure that was written in there too. It was not, yeah. but I decided I'd throw that in. Are we still doing the prices right? Yeah, we got options. Yep. No, we got to do prices right. Pounds of the average adult horse. Okay, who went first last time? I did. Okay, so you'll go last. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to say, let you know what? Thousand pounds. Let's just get it. A thousand. That's the average. Mm-hmm. Okay, Whitney. Uh, closest without going over. <laughs> mm-hmm. You going to stick me again? Never no, really I just like that. guessing an actual number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not about strategy. Okay, <laughs> you're just going for it. Um, I don't know, 1,200. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. I want to go 1,800. Mm. Ooh, 1800. going Ooh, on the okay. high side. All right. Okay. Where are you going, Tangerman? Okay, you're 1800, you're 12. at 12. And I'm at one. I'm gonna go 1500. Okay, middle of the pack. Ooh. Everybody's above me. Wow. Yakum. I, I was going to say like 750. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You guys okay. are all in the thousands. Okay. Yeah. No, because I was thinking that too, but like, I'm going one pound. Oh, okay. there it is. I think you're all over. Just okay. gamesmanship. I think it's under a thousand. Uh. Okay. Well. I got a pretty tight window. It's a thousand to two, 1200 gets yeah. me wins. A thousand to 1200? Yeah. Uh, okay, Emma, the answers are not quite... <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I guess it's average. Okay, it's so the average, average yeah. horse typically weighs between 900 to 1,200 pounds. That's me. Come on, that's my win. That, no way she gets it. She's... 900, 1,200, you're over. I said 1,000. 900. I got the majority of that average. Oh, Jacob's say, going for him. No, nah, you gotta no. have it. Uh, you know what, Nick? No, no, no. I I'm trust blaming you. him on this. No. Oh, wait. Wait, but then Jacob wins. I'm That's why him he's on trying to do that. He if wants you his average under. out 900, yeah. Yeah, 900, 1200, his... no, then Because saying, saying a range isn't an average. An average is a number. Uh, so then you're taking the average of the, the range. Oh, average nah. the range. Average the range. Yeah. Who, That's not who the can average. math it? <laughs> no one can do that. Anna, do you do math? <laughs> Wait, 900 <laughs> to 1200? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it's like impossible. 10, yeah, yeah, that's it's that's impossible number. That was like ten fifty or something. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I accept. But no, that's not the average. You know what? You just sound well, like a sore loser, buddy. I don't know. I think it's one no, point no, for Jim. You, I'm blaming you. Two the this. horse is dead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the dead horse. Yeah, let's assume the horse is also dead. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Because technically right. a dead Jim horse weighs the same as the living horse. horse. I feel I'm giving another point on this one. Jim and I uh, were in the range, though, so. Uh, no, don't Jim and I. Yeah. Don't fucking coattail me. Yeah. You're on the goddamn edge. You're outside the Not door. No, no, I was in the no. range. I just, I, no, I got you range. this win, by don't the way. Remember that. Don't try to walk into the club. Okay? I will average give, the I range. Hear, me. Hold on. <laughs> I'll give each of you a third of a point. Wow. And then I'm going to give still myself splitting the one baby. point for being a good sport. Splitting, <laughs> splitting the horse on this. All right. What about Anna? Wow. Anna's Anna fine. Gets She's fine. Way out of the range. She's picked the fattest horse in existence. <laughs> Extra muscly. She picked a fucking Been cow. Been a mental fit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to save some of the rest of these. Are we skipping? All right. Yep, to to the next question. Here we go. Distant father passed away. My father just got diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. He's on his way to dying. This has been hard. Uh, This has been hard news to process. My father and I aren't estranged from each other, but we also don't talk. I'll see him at family Christmas and we'll send happy birthday texts to each other. uh, But that is about it. It took a long time, but I thought uh, I've accepted that this will be the extent of our relationship that I'd get from him. He's very closed off as a person. He doesn't try for conversation with me. And talking to him is a ner- very nerve-wracking to me because he has a short temper and will snap if I say the wrong thing. So I feel like my brain kind of just freezes up around him and I can't think of things to say. It's very dull when we talk. I'm 24 years old and completely no contact with my mother. I keep getting overwhelmed with the thought how I'll have no parent left soon, even though it's kind of like that now because I barely even have a relationship with the parent I talk to and have known I can't rely on him for normal things people need their parents for or even any emotional support. And then I tell myself it's wrong for me to even be this sad because of how we are with each other. I lost my stepmom and aunt both to cancer as well, so I'm thinking mainly the emotions I'm feeling are due to what's happened in the past. I'm constantly wondering if this would be easier or harder for me if we did have a typical father-daughter relationship. And how is it that I am feeling like I'm losing someone who's a big part of my heart, even though we barely know each other? And how do I quit feeling sorry for myself? This, is, this has to be hard news to him, obviously. I don't have ill feelings against my dad, so I want to be there for him, but I have no clue how. Should I be pushy, or should I just let him know that I'm here for him? Sorry, it's so many questions. Any advice would be great. Thanks, Anonymous. A couple layers of questions on this. I think I'm hearing questions on <clears throat> advice for how to be helpful to a person going through this and whether or not to kind of impose in a sense, like advance in the relationship or give them space, but then also kind of exploring this reality of feeling this way about a distant relationship in a, in a really sad circumstance and a really tragic one. Well, it sounds like it's coming from kind of a similar place as that question last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little yeah. bit, not exactly, but um, where the writer here might be worried about like regrets or, you know, if I don't say something, what does that mean? If I do say something, does it even matter? Because my dad will just snap at me or right. um, I can't even get out what I want to say is what I'm, hearing the writer say as well that if they try and share their feelings or thoughts about something the dad kind of reacts um and so that's like a tough a tough balancing act there but Mm. there's a lot of grief in there too with the stepmom and the aunt passing and i think it's really insightful that they're pointing that out as well because it almost sounds like these waves of grief have been happening and now it's like this is my last parent i'm saying in quotes my last parent and I don't even have a great relationship with them, but how will I feel once they pass? Right. And that's a tough spot to be in. That is really hard. That's a scary thought anyway. Yeah. Just in general. And at at 24, like Mm, how young to be experiencing that feeling? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, Slightly uh, older than twenty. Uh, all in our thirties, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but like I, I, and my parents are still alive. Mm-hmm. But I still have that thought of 
and it always it it always reminds me of um stop this train the song by john mayer and there's a line in there he was talking about like getting older and just what that's like and there's this line in there that he says he's one generation's length, one generation's length away from finding life out on my own mm. and just just kind of that Ugh. that yeah that just that heavy thought of like like for me my parents have always been the safety net mm-hmm. you know, they're like, the oldest generation yeah, yeah. Like, so or whatever like, yeah yeah so it's like okay well i mean i'm a grown adult but like worst case scenario yeah you always go back i've always got them yeah you know but so there is that thought of like oh shit like that's not going to be around forever. Yes. And there's just, it's a short amount of time and then that is gone. And then now there's no safety net. Right. But like how you often know? do you think about that? Almost. I mean, for me, almost never. I take yeah. that for granted a hundred percent. It's like, I don't. Yeah. Your mom said that. She did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why. You I don't, don't even call, call her. her. You don't call her. Yeah. <laughs> I hate y'all so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did want to say super fast. Whenever I have clients that come in and they have a hard time expressing uh, their feelings or thoughts to usually it is a parent, a strong, strong parent there. Um, I usually go to, and I've said this before in here, um, try, try letter writing of some form mm. um, because it's a way to feel like you got everything you want to say out. You had time to think about what you wanted to say. And I just really suggest if you go that route, do not have expectations of a response, mm. an emotional reaction. Mm. Like it's got to be kind of no strings attached. And this is for right. me, not, I mean, not wholly for the other person. Right. And I know yeah. the writer addresses that too. Like, do I push talking to my dad because they need, they're going through something and right. I'm not there for them? Or is it just about me? Um, but I'm all about my clients. So it's all about you. <laughs> it's all about you. I like your point, though, about like that whole extra generation, right? Like that elder generation passing away, my aunt, and now, you know, my father. And there is, I think, just that part of it, just grieving the absence yeah. of that entire class of people in your brain at such a young age. And that sadness. I mean, and writer, I guess I'm, I'm just sad for you. I mean, at 24 years old, you've had to cut off your mother. You have a very strained relationship with your father. You've already gone through a lot of mortality in your family tree. And to even have to face this at 24 years old and try to think to yourself, what am I meant to do with this? I mean, like, if you're in your, I don't know, mid to late 50s, like, you know, Vice President Harris, Nick, you know, (laughs) those folks... They, they are equipped oh. to say goodbye oh. in some ways because they have all these decades that they've had with their family, you know, and yeah. it's like, okay, this, this is terrible, but I know who you are. I know who I am. You got me through certain periods of my life. Whereas in this case, you're 24 in the sense of like, wow, we could have still had a whole different version of our relationship as adults. Maybe yeah. we would have hit our stride when I was in my thirties, you know, I don't know. And I think there's a lost opportunity to this. What do we think about when somebody is going through a terminal illness like this and that feeling of, I don't want to keep you at arm's length because I don't want to not be available to you, but also I don't know if I'm supposed to like suddenly change the rules of our relationship because, but then maybe I should, because this is absolutely an existential situation you're facing and I am your child and maybe I should kind of kick the door open emotionally here and say, Listen, you know, I love you. I am not going to keep that a secret. I care for you and I want to be around you. And even if you just sit here in silence, we're going to do that because I want to make sure that you get from me what you need. Like, what, what, what do you guys think about this whole, how do you respectfully approach somebody going through this? Well, I think you're kind of balancing needs on two fronts. You're balancing your needs mm. and you're also kind of balancing their needs. Yeah. yeah. What do they need in this situation? What do you need? And hopefully there those two can be congruent. Uh but sometimes maybe they're not. Congruent? And, yeah. Yeah. It's an Australian what? term. <laughs> <laughs> congruent. Congruent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Whitney. You're but, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, I did. You don't want to lack kangarooancy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I I did go there when I was uh, listening to you read through that, Jim. A tiny part of me was like, yeah, just bust in that door and say, hey, yeah, I'm you know, now. this is what I want, and you know, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to tell you what I think or mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, I tell me how often you see. Uh, I don't know how old this 
this data is here. Um, but I have heard multiple stories from people who will have typically their dad almost even not tell them when they have a terminal illness. Yeah. Someone told me this just recently. They just didn't tell their family because they didn't want to go through treatment. And yeah. so they knew their family would convince them mm. to go through treatment. And yeah. then it was just like, okay, well, I'm going to pass in a couple weeks or that's, a month that's, or whatever. That happened in our family. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Enough times go back, I think I talk about it. But uh, my mother's father had terminal lung cancer and didn't tell any mm-hmm. of us, didn't tell his children. Uh, and Is he, he like a strong, silent type? Yeah, or? very okay. strong, silent farmer, you know, um, and mm. he had been for years going to the oncologist and getting reports and doing the next thing he was told to do. Um, but it, it got to the place where it couldn't be treated and he, nobody even knew that he had lung cancer, you yeah. know, because he kept it to himself. He didn't want any of his conversations and Christmases and, you know, Changes any of the moments. Everything. To be around them. Yeah, he didn't want that to be like, now we're worried about this. Right. And, uh, you know, how is he and what's going on? And, and you know, I think his logic was, you're going to mourn either way. So I'm going to contain that and make it all at once and not make you have to do it leading into it. Um, but he ended up taking his life. Mm, so, mm-hmm. you know, that was obviously extra shocking. And that yeah. was a whole nother reality. And so... That oh, was difficult. Sorry but, to hear that. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people keep stuff like this a secret. And yeah. it's one of those things where you think, oh, that's selfish. You shouldn't do that. And it's like, but then I've had a long time to think about his choice. And mm-hmm. I look at it and go, you know what, man, that was his choice. Like, there's, there's an argument on both sides. Mm-hmm. There's an argument that's that the balance again. It's his freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not Nick my was place. saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, euthanasia is a very big ethical conversation. So, mm-hmm. one other thing that I wanted to point out, um, you, writer, say, and how do I quit feeling sorry for myself? Mm. So I did want to point that out because I think a lot of people get into that kind of mindset where it's like, oh, poor me. I'm feeling sorry for myself. How do I stop doing this? And there's like a difference between feeling sorry for yourself and having empathy for yourself being in a difficult situation. Yeah. So cut yourself a little slack there because I, I think it's perfectly – natural and i don't think it's anything that you need to like do differently if you recognize that this is a shitty situation and you kind of feel bad about being in that situation i think that's perfectly normal yeah no great point that i mean this is a shitty situation Mm -hmm. you're allowed to mourn you're allowed to feel bad for yourself on a lot of levels you're allowed to say "I'm, i'm disappointed that my father and i never became besties i I'm mourning the future that we're not going to have. I'm sad that somebody I care for is suffering and that there is a loneliness. I'm sad for a lot of things. I'm sad that that's the only relative I feel like I still have, like in that parent class tier, you know, it's okay. I think it's okay to be sad in this situation. And, you know, my only advice on this would just be, look, leave nothing on the field. You know, that's, I kind of want, or leave it all on the field. Like, get out there. Well, which is it? it it's definitely the latter one. Yeah, you want to leave it all on the field. Leave, leave no nothing man behind. behind. There it is. Leave no man behind. Yeah. Leave no man behind on the field, but yeah, leave yeah, yeah, everything yeah. on the field. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except Buy for the man. man. Is it, well, don't leave the men. Don't no, leave the men. Leave everything else. Now, now you got it. Never leave, leave, the, man leave the man's behind on, yeah, the, field. on the field. Exactly. Uh, Which field? Jacob's always got to get the don't, behinds involved. Don't cut off the behind and yeah. leave it on the field. Yeah, the field of dreams. Do, don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Oh. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Proud of you on that one, Jacob. You just... Yeah. <laughs> It's the notes he doesn't play. I looked, it's and jazz. there was nothing. Else. It's yeah. jazz. You know, what he does is art. Okay, he doesn't just give you credit. Can't be what predictable. You want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Field of Dreams is a very popular movie overseas, especially yeah. with young people, especially yes. with the youth in Asia. Mm, yeah, there it is. It's full circle. That <laughs> yeah, way to come back. He always finds the better one. But um, he's been sitting anyway. On writer, on I would behind. want you to hold back. I would want you to. They're mostly boys point. because of the two-child <laughs> policy in China. There it is. There it is. I knew we were going to get to that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew somehow he was going to come back. <laughs> uh, anyway, Ryder, I Sorry. think you should tell your father how you feel. I, I hope that you like, I like your idea, Whitney, of changing the medium, maybe writing a letter that says, yeah. hey, I love you. And like th- their eyes have to read that, right? And yeah. so, well, like, and even if he doesn't read it. Yeah. Like, right. you know, there's yeah. a therapeutic aspect oh, to just writing it and then yeah. feeling like, you know, you've kind of done your part. Yeah. There. If there's no yeah. reach back, like you, you've done what you can do. Yeah. yeah. And you can always put the options in the letter to say something like, 
on one hand, dad, I really want to be around you during this time and I want to support you and I want you to feel that I am near you and I'm with you and I love you. On the other hand, I also don't want to annoy you or crowd you and I want to show respect. This letter is me letting you know that that's on the table. Let me know what you'd like. I mean, I was thinking about it while you guys were talking about it and uh, the, the the kind of balance that I was thinking of. You, you guys were all talking about balance and a different way that I was kind of thinking of it is it's the balance of your needs versus the balance of your dad's needs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you need to be as whole as you can be when he passes away. Good point. Because after that, you're, you're done. So like, if you you feel like you, you might need to reach out or whatever, I would say do it. Yeah. Because it might, it might turn into something good and you won't question it for the rest of your life after your dad passes away. Good point. Uh, but at the same time, you want to balance his needs in there too, because you don't want to you don't want to overreach sure. to a point where it makes him uncomfortable, or if he doesn't want you like there's there's it's a, it's a sticky wicket. I say just go <laughs> and let him tell where you I'm he's from. uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, when he's annoyed, he'll be like, and uh, you can leave any time. Like, yeah. all right, Dad, great. <laughs> all right, you know, super. I'll see you in a couple of days. As soon as he goes, well. It's well, been good. Been good. On yeah. The yeah. Is that the, what's that the, the Iowa goodbye? Yeah, is that it is. They stand up and well, <laughs> slap your slap your, your hands down on your yeah. knees. Well, <laughs> adjust your belt. You know, just, and that just means you go to the door and talk. Yeah, a little you bit just longer. talk yeah, longer. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just open the door and just leave it there for a while. And if there are yeah. chairs on the front porch, yeah, oh, oh, no. forget it. Not you're, past you're an hour and a half out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ryder, thanks for this one. We are sorry to hear about this, but I'm glad you're being intentional with it. You're trying to do this the right way. And, um, you know, I hope that you find the way that works for you. So good luck with that. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about unrequited love for your best friend with whom you have a podcast. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. <laughs> Completely anonymous. Oh, shit. Today's episode is brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Mrs. Hot Dog Scoop. And if you would like to sponsor the show, become a therapy at patreon.com slash therapy. All right, so I'm up. I believe it's one to nothing. What no, are have, you talking about? I have one as well. I if you have, have one, one, I have one. Fine. I accept. Well, if you guys have one, I have one. No, you don't have jack I have one shit. and a third from now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Whitney doesn't have shit. <laughs> Were you only even listening to the last? No. no. Dang it. We have one. <laughs> no. No. I couldn't Did tell you what I was start now. Touché. How much prize money in millions of dollars? Millions. Was awarded to the winner of the 2020 Kentucky Derby. Ooh, Jesus. 2020? I think it's one of those things like the WNBA. I think you make more from sponsorships than you do Uh-oh. from the game. And you know what I'm saying? I think the horse sells like fucking Gatorade. And like that's where the money is. Yeah. And I'll bet oh, you, you the think purse like isn't that big. From Gatorade? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Gatorade. Whoever huge. sells horses. Well, he horses said millions. So. Well, I mean, they, apparently they're for breeding. So it's probably like, you know. A jar of horse semen, but like that's the, okay, where that's the money. Two is. episodes in a row, he's brought up horse it's semen. His, that's not unrelated to this. This time, the horse that wins the <laughs> race. Time. Time. Look, we still don't know what it has anything to I do with you, the Tour de France. I promise you, right. Discord, as like, Emma is <laughs> listening to this episode, she's nodding along and going, "He's not fucking wrong." There's the horse real semen money and is breeding that fucking oh, horse. Of course, whoever of course. wins that race, <laughs> fine. The jockey and the horse get laid, like all over town. Like everybody pays. All right, that's what I'm saying. Gigolo <laughs> horse. That's where uh. the money is. <laughs> So, okay, so what, sorry, what's your answer? answer? <laughs> I'm, I think the purse is low. I, circle, I think it's a, a low purse. Okay. High. So less on than a million. The gigolo. Uh, no, not less than a million. <laughs> Eight dollars. Point four it's million. It's a plurality of millions. This is decimal. Yeah. All right. I will. I don't think I should go first. I think I went first. Oh, you did go time. first. I think it's my turn to go okay, first. Go ahead. All right. Okay. So it's the winner of the Kentucky Derby in 2020. Yes. Not counting the semen uh, one. Just the purse. <laughs> I don't know what the Navy has anything to do with. <laughs> Leave the Navy out of it. Um, five million. What's that horse submarine full of? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> it's white gold. Okay, I'm sorry. What? Five million. Okay. Anna? I'll go ten million. Ooh. Ooh. You're just okay. going to ignore the white the white gold reference? It's... I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Obviously, episode title. Nothing. And will be the second Dang week it. that I have referenced million. it. 18 million. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say? I think Anna? I'm way over. 10. You said 10. All right, I'll take 11. <laughs> what Rude. 
Let it. <laughs> uh, lowest right now is five, right? I gave her yeah. a whole million dollars. That's a window. <laughs> Give me. It is a lot. Would you say million no to a million one. dollars? Yeah, right exactly. Now? No. I'll take right, four and a half million. All right, so Jim's out. <laughs> okay. Four and a half. And you got the lowest one. Yeah, I went under. Yeah, Whitney has five. We all lost. Three million. Oh. Oh. I, it's, oh, shit. It's close without going over. Fuck. Mm. That, that's mm. right. That's why we should all lost. <laughs> oh, Jim should have guessed one dollar. <laughs> but I was easily the closest. Closest without going under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a whole different game. I feel like I deserve something. <laughs> because my horse seeding theory was correct. Oh, my God. That's where the money is. Okay. Uh, how many years on average? <laughs> idiot. It's where the money is. Right. It's where the money Somebody is. look it up. Look up how much the, the breeding rights of that horse is. Is anyone arguing It's more than three Jim? million. No one's arguing at all. Yeah, I've stopped Anna, listening. stop arguing with Jim. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anna's just sitting there going, yeah, this guy's making fucking points, okay? There's a, Sorry, there's Nick, a what were you saying? Okay. market, and it's more than $3 million. And the winner market. of the Kentucky Derby is going to be the one. <laughs> That's, wasn't that the a, name of the I'll, band you were in? I'll horse bet you it's a million by the fucking leader, okay? Like, you're going to make horse so much Jim money. Market. Uh, Jim, yeah. I can tell you right now, the uh, the, the stud horses, <laughs> yes. Kentucky Derby winning stud horses, after they get put out to stud, yes. uh-huh. they get paid per full. They don't get paid per like amount of semen. They get they only get it's paid per, ounce. per full, as in <laughs> empty per, per versus full. full per baby horse. A full. Oh, full, yeah, that's a very different thing. Yeah. So, you how much it. per full is the stud fee for a Kentucky Derby winning Ooh. horse? Ooh, that's interesting. You only have to pay if if it takes. I well, like you, that. you. You it's a money back guarantee. You keep right on there. trying until you till it fucking works. Yeah, you do. God, the horse life. All right, I'm gonna go. <laughs> the horse life. I'll bet you. This is everybody, by the way. Jim, I'll bet Jim you it's started. Right. Let's go. Let's go five hundred thousand per full. Okay. All right. And that that horse is just going to town. He's okay. making printing fucking money. Down. That is where it is. <laughs> That's the town. That he's three going million to. is five hundred thousand per full. I'll bet. I'll bet two hundred two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Take I'm go a little lower. Right. Shoot, that was what I was gonna do. Go. Uh, I'm gonna do a hundred. A oh, hundred. Wow. Great. Mm. One hundred fifty. These, these rich people want oh. it so bad. I, I think I got to give that to Whitney because a hundred to two twenty five. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. per pony, man. That is, yeah. Come on now, and they're lining them up. They're just printing money. That's that's all you're doing. <laughs> Print money with there, a horse though. dick. I mean, wh- how many? So it's about one hundred and fifty thousand per. Uh, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Call, call it a hundred for just to do math easier. So every thirty gets you a million, right? That's how that works. Thirty. Is it thirty? Thirty one hundred thousands equals. Uh, three million? Yep, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Moving on. Next question. <laughs> Was it 10? No, so no, it's no, 30. no, no. You got it. You got so it. So every 30 Next gets question. you the Kentucky Derby <laughs> per- Next purse. question. Nick, please start. How going. many years, on average, does a living horse compete in equestrian sports before retiring? Oh. <laughs> like you threw in the living because it felt natural. Because <laughs> uh. <laughs> dead horses can compete. <laughs> they open up the rule book. They're no, uh, they're no rules. Like, they can. The sport's just a little different. <laughs> It looks a little different on TV. <laughs> Don't keep beating them. Fastest to the glue factory. For the love of God. <laughs> All right. How long in years do the, does the average compete? horse compete in equestrian sports before Nick has retiring? to go first. It can't be very I long. can't because I already saw him. Oh, okay. Okay. oh, so I have to go first. Price is right. Um, it can't be very long, man. Yeah, I'm going to say four. Boy, that seems high. That does. I was going to okay. well, guess, guess guess You're welcome to guess lower. Yeah, and I will. I kind of think one year. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I think it matters though whether it's um like a really competitive eventing yeah. or equestrian horse or if it's like someone that's like owns a horse and right. is doing it for fun. Dressage. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like it, yeah, very like seriously competing versus yeah. Yeah, yeah like either. high level because like oh, it's Emma, expensive to to run well, those horses. Emma yeah. has Tonka and she's said yeah. Tonka's been competing for a long time. Right. She's had Tonka forever. Uh, so yeah. like Clearly, Competing there's some what, time though? in there. Yeah, repeat the question. Like racing? Know, they like jump over shit. There's right, pictures right. of her jumping over things. Yeah, not, not a race. Tonka's not a race horse. She looks though. bad. No. How many years too. on average does a horse compete in equestrian sports equestrian before retiring? Sports. Oh, it's not just horse racing. Yeah, if no. it's horse uh-huh. racing, that's like fucking greyhounds. They burn through that shit. Yeah. There's no way you last. Long. Oh, I have no idea. Well, okay. I mean, polo. You need three horses just to compete one match, right? Yeah. So fucking. Yeah, so they don't even. Plus so, the the race horses between racing and having sex, like they're burning through those sport. things. Give me another horse. 
They do. <laughs> no, they do. <laughs> just no, they don't die. Box. They, they don't die. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Get off that horse and shoot it. <laughs> That's the rule. That's the rule. It's just absurd. Get my other you horse. Now the other yes. other horse. See how it works as the biathlon people. Oh, no. <laughs> and Anna the was trying people to avoid this together. one. She did not escape. <laughs> That's right. It's really one sport. This is, this is the third leg of the biathlon. The polo people yeah. supply the targets for the biathlon people. <laughs> Quick, take them down. <laughs> And from 50 meters away, it looks about the size of a CD. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I guess because there were the size new of guess. our eyes. So we got Can four we new years guess? on the board. I wasn't... Okay, yes. All right, new guesses. Unless Jacob wants to keep his. You want to lock in four oh. or you want to redo? No, no, I'm going to go higher then. I'll go uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Jacob's got seven I'm... months. What do you need? Seven months. Seven months. <laughs> <laughs> seven minutes in polo. <laughs> did not go I long. I shot the horse. <laughs> did not shoot I'm the I'm going to guess uh, oh, five. Uh, boy, it seems like it's got to be a long time. So, But I think seven's really high, so I, I'll go under. I'll take a three. We'll stick with the odds. Close without going over, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay at one. You're going low. Oh, yeah. I'm, getting, yeah. I'm getting a point on this. I feel confident. What do you yeah. have? Seven? Seven. I think he's best positioned. Jacob wins. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Damn. 15 to 20 years. Whoa. Fuck yeah. Oh, okay. Christ. Damn. You all I seriously I underestimated, underestimated horses. Horses. They're events. They're doing fucking LeBron James time yeah. in the yeah. game? Fuck. That is impressive. That's average. Now, you yeah. don't know equestrian events. I That's do not. I clearly do not. You were even quoting Tonka. So well, yeah. Known. I just know that Emma's had Tonka for a long time. Okay, last one for this one. This one is uh, this one's appropriate. How many <laughs> Olympic medals has the United States won in equestrian events with mm. live horses since the inclusion of the sport what? in the Olympics? <laughs> Thank you for adding the live. Live horses. <laughs> Since they outlawed the dead ones. I was like, she said that? And I was like, oh no. Nick Dad, let me He's just me. making sure I don't ask for a free play. One guy showed up with a horse marionette once. <laughs> Almost got him. Yep. Almost got him. <laughs> Almost tricked him. <laughs> said, there's nothing in the rules. Says, I can't have a donkey kick a field goal. <laughs> so is gold or any medal? An Olympic medal uh, of any kind? How many Olympic medals? And what's oh. the sport? Uh, any? One in equestrian events. So all oh. equestrian events. Since the inclusion of the sport in the Olympics. You might as well have asked how many equestrian events are in the Olympics. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, that could be zero. And right. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have I, no idea. No. Yeah. I assume it's somewhere between and, none and yeah. infinite. Emma, look, I want to be pro this horse sport thing. I'm against it being in the Olympics. That <laughs> violates the fucking concept. Well, which one's the athlete? <laughs> Why don't we do that fucking robot battles, dude? What if, <laughs> what if, <laughs> what if, what if all the horses are Greek? That's really an off the rail. It's that fucking what cockfight. If it's all Greek horses, <laughs> nude Should, Greek yeah, horses, yeah, yeah. Just letting fucking animals do the Olympics. This is dumb. <laughs> I mean, cock well, fighting's in right the Olympics. <laughs> it's called call jousting. It yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I went. First uh, I'll go five. I'll bet you five we medals? win a shit five medals medals total. Ever? Yeah, because the other countries have that. to fucking eat the horse. So I, I'm going to say that we have like twenty. <laughs> Mm, I'm gonna guess fifteen. No, D thirty. I'm gonna ask thirty. Ooh. Oh, I'll bet you were probably closer. I'm gonna steal the fifty. Ah, <laughs> like uh, thirty and a half. I hate okay. you. <laughs> Anna's on the board. Oh, oh, nice. there you go. Fifty-two. <gasps> oh, oh, nice. Nice. Oh, I should have gone with my gut. Very yeah, good. You should have. I was just I deciding who to America. go over. America. So do I do I take Anna's answer or do I take Whitney's answer? I know, right? <laughs> well, now take we wrong. Know. Well, you go to America. America. American horses. It's a lot but of medals. That's how yeah. many equestrian yeah, events are there? Zero for the biathlon. Yeah. I know. That's what I <laughs> We're working on it, okay? All right. Yeah. Get well, more horses on. in no, I'm, that. I'm serious. <laughs> we, we need to fucking find a way to sponsor this team. Like, or at least send them a card or something. Like, hey. <laughs> We are rooting for you. you now, if it. you included the horse in the biathlon. Oh, it crush. No, listen. For the loop. Listen. Would the horse be on the skis <laughs> or would the horse be shooting the gun? Oh, shit. Yeah. Think about it. No, you just blew my mind. I can't you imagine just... riding a horse on skis. Yeah, no, that's, that's obviously the more fun. 
Oh, it's obviously the so more fun. Small. But I also like the horse Dude. in the shooting position with its arms like folded, <laughs> like one eye closed, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and just horse. fiddling with the fucking trigger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like just how many really fucking yawn at this thing. <laughs> how many equestrian events are in the Olympics? Oh. Oh. oh please okay, well, don't no. be more you than one. You know there's going to be a variant of like is in there. I know dressage is what, only because of Mitt Romney. That, that's the only saying. reason I even know that. <laughs> no, cuz I think um one of the royals did dressage. Okay. Was Mitt Romney a horse in the Olympics? Yes. Was his wife. Dressage horse? Yeah. Very no. respected Olympian horse. <laughs> uh the jumping one. Yeah, no. I think the jumping. I think it's just called jumping. Dressage, which that could is be, yeah, horse could dancing. Be right. They can't many? do horse racing because I think that it's just no. way yeah. too elsewhere. I don't think I, I'm going to say two. Okay. Uh, those are the only two I can think of, so I'm just going to go with those I'll two. bet you it's like, I'll bet you polo's in there. I, I mean, where the hell else is it, you know? I, water polo is definitely in the Olympics. Water horse polo is just <laughs> yeah, just cruel. <laughs> They're <mean>. drowning. <laughs> <laughs> They're all and that's a very shallow pool where the horses just can just stand in it. And they're just wet and annoyed. <laughs> I think two. Yeah, I think probably two. How many is it? Uh, it's three. And oh. Nick named two of them. Oh, so wow. Dressage yeah. and jumping are two of them. What was the third? Uh, the third one is eventing. Oh, my. So they just like coordinate conferences? I assume that, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They plan weddings. Event planning. <laughs> yeah. Event. You went way overboard on the carrots, god damn it. <laughs> It's carrot cake. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> We're too baby few sugar ever. tubes. <laughs> <laughs> Unrequited love with best friend. I need help. I have this best friend who I'm so deeply in love with. Our connection is so strong and he feels like my soulmate. We hang out all the time and are all, stop looking at me, Nick. We hang out all the time. <laughs> And we There's are always, eyes again. <laughs> always with those bedroom eyes. We hang out all the time and are always on the phone. Or there it is. <laughs> with those horse <laughs> in, in front of you. I like it. Uh, where was I? Oh, we hang out all the time and are always on the phone or texting. He knows how I feel about him. But he says <laughs> he doesn't return my feelings enough to be my official boyfriend. Everyone I thinks we are dating. The Kentucky <laughs> Derby before I shipped out to the Navy. This episode's off the rails. <laughs> when I got to the Navy, they said I was just another horse <laughs> Horse I'm just a horse seaman out in the Atlantic. In I'm a job. my country and my home. <laughs> Why stop reading the letter, Jim? Oh, I, you know what? <laughs> Weird. I wonder if this human was hoping that's what we would do with it. <laughs> I think that's what you get when you write into bot therapy. There's, there's really no fucking. <laughs> in the no way I can. I cannot upstage your song with the letter. <laughs> all right, go. Happen. All right, fine. Uh, uh, I've told my friend uh, we hang out all the time and we're always on the phone or texting. He knows how I feel about him, but he says he doesn't return my feelings enough to be my official boyfriend. Everyone thinks we are dating because we are affectionate with each other and always together. We act like any couple does with how frequently we talk and interact. We have sex often and have an intense emotional connection. I don't understand why or how he doesn't feel the same about me since he likes having sex with me. And he wants to talk to me all the time. He says he can't explain it, and it is so confusing to me. But that isn't the part I need help with. At this point, I feel used by him, and like he's only keeping me around until he finds someone else he likes enough for him to commit to. I've told him I can no longer engage in any sex or cuddles, since it is too difficult for me. But he still wants to talk and hang out with me 24-7. But at this point, even that is getting too hard. Everyone tells me to cut him off completely because I'm so in love with him and I need to heal so I can find someone who I am enough for. Here's what I need help with. How on earth do I let go of my very best friend? I feel like I can't go on without him, but it's breaking my heart that I fill the girlfriend role for him, but just until he finds someone else to replace me. Should I cut him off cold turkey? Or just deal with the pain that comes from having uh, him in my life while I'm suffering with this unrequited love. Am I doing myself a disservice? Thanks, Anonymous. Wow. <sighs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm glad you got a picture of Nick flashing me the bedroom eyes while I <laughs> read the unrequited love You're letter. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, I agree with your friends. Yep. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, this is... <laughs> well, no, no, don't that. fuck them. Oh, yeah, oh, no, sorry, no. We, aren't, we aren't doing that Stop anymore. Stop fucking right. him. My bad. <laughs> the advice is the exact <laughs> opposite of what you want to do. <laughs> no, I, I... Yeah, this is... Uh, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. I mean, because if I, hypothetically, if you just decide that, oh, let's just continue this and I'll just find some way to work through my feelings. You're right. There's somebody else that's going to come along. At some yeah. point, there's yeah. going to be somebody else and you're going to be right there. And it's. Yeah. And when somebody else comes along, by the way, you don't stick around as that friend anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because somebody done. else doesn't want his old fuck buddy hanging around with him. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're done. You're on borrowed time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, hope, I hope this doesn't come across as too harsh. But, yeah, th- this guy, that's... I, I, I don't see a way, a way out for you that ends up being uh, you're dating now. Yeah, and it's for your own good. Uh, this is, you know, it's... You got to look out for yourself. And I just, I feel like I, I'd be too worried right now that you're just you're allowing yourself to be put in a very vulnerable position where at some point it's going to really hurt worse than it does already yeah and i realize it already hurts and it's not going to get any better i don't think yeah if if i were your friend i would i would just be like let's go out we're getting laid and i bet your friends have done that and i think you should take your friends up on that to, you should help. Yeah. Wait, what? So you should take your <laughs> your friend, the guy. No, 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 not that guy at all. Oh, your the other friend. Oh, go cut him out off. and go. Oh, <clears throat> the best way to get over a guy is get under another one. I think so. Yeah, as the fortune cookie says. Yeah, I would have <laughs> yeah. said fortune oh, cookie. Yeah, I always get. It. I would have said get on another one, but I'm a feminist, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> that no, he's right. Yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah. Uh, you have to set a boundary, and um, that comes. From really what thinking, stuff only. Mm. yeah. Well, that obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but what you my feel booty, like you de- you deserve, and you even said in here, it it almost is like torture. You know, you're he's telling you clearly what he doesn't want in this case. Right. I don't want this relationship, and I think your feelings are valid. It's hard to pull away from that and that's really what your question is how do i stop that in right. some ways if i do decide to cut him off like how do you even do that because when you are infatuated with somebody or deeply in love with them especially i mean how do you end that how do you cut that off let me and- yeah. let's let's play let's play out a scenario whitney let's say that you and i let's say that you and i are friends let's start okay. let's start with that imaginary oh, oh, are we just yeah. <laughs> making oh shit up friends, guys. this is getting weird He's I have a friend. <laughs> <laughs> every month i come to you and say whitney i need two hundred dollars mm-hmm. to pay to pay bills mm-hmm. and every month you give me that two hundred dollars mm-hmm. yeah and uh and, and you know there's no you know there's there's no talk of me paying it back or whatever you assume that you're giving this to me as a gift because we're buddies and and you want me to be taken care of in this imaginary circumstance so you're imaginary sugar baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sugar mama sugar mama and then you find out uh one day <laughs> that I am taking that two hundred dollars and I'm just going to the bar Kay. and I'm just and I'm just spending two hundred dollars at the bar every month Okay. Uh, on on your dime, uh, how would you feel at, at that point? I would feel used. Exactly, <laughs> you'd feel used. So I should stop paying that two hundred dollars. No, you're that's me. not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> what now would you, you tell me to do? Now Jacob? you're reading into it. Yeah, you're really getting the wrong idea. It's like she wasn't even listening. I was listening. using our two hundred dollar yeah. availability yeah. as yeah. a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, but I mean, like, whether this guy is, has uh, bad intentions or not, I'm sure he probably doesn't. I mean, y- y- y'all are y'all are friends or whatever. You know him, uh, but I mean, to some degree, he's using you. Well, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. sounds like writer has landed on that. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, a- a- at some point, it sounds like it may have been a mutually beneficial type relationship, right? right. And it clearly is not at this point. Um, and obviously he has no reason to change. Um, it's, you know, cause he's still getting kind of what he needs out of he, this relationship. He's getting laid and enjoying it. Yeah. And, well, and they stopped has, having sex. So like, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I yeah. Make sure we catch that. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but I think, uh, fuck, now I lost my train of thought. Choo-choo. There it is. There it is. 
It's pulling into the station, Tangerman. Uh, no, he's getting what I, he needs out of it. Uh, at one point, they were both getting what they needed out of it. Yep. He's, Sounds right. I'm just repeating well, things so, that you said. Right, to I want to defend memory. the guy. I know Go. that's going to surprise Horse everybody. Scene. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. it, is. it always comes back. <laughs> Always. What are you going to say here? I do want to say in the defense. <laughs> Go on. Of, so okay. I, I oh, he's starting thoughts. off in the defense of the guy. I'm defending <sighs> the guy. Defending Whitney the guy. is right, taking right. a bottle of pepper spray out of her purse. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. All right. I want to defend the guy a little bit because I feel like letters like this, or if a person's talking to their friends and mm-hmm. they're telling the story, the the immediate stereotyping or just typecasting of the roles is. Oh, this exploitative, lying douchebag taking advantage. And boy, does that not sound what this letter said. This no, letter, it doesn't. No. Yeah, and so I just want to speak that because I just want to acknowledge And I'm not accusing any of you of doing this, but I'm just Seems saying. Seems like you are. Well, I think you are all douchebags. So, no, but like, look, it's an adult, consensual relationship. All cards were on the table. And you said this is for fun and we're just enjoying it and it's getting better and better. And then somebody developed feelings. Okay, that happens. And then when approached honestly about it, the friend says, I do not reciprocate your feelings, Mm -hmm. but I also don't not like you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I'm available for whatever, if you're comfortable with this, great, but I'm not available to go beyond that. And now you're a grown woman and you think about what you want to do. And she came back after talking about it with Mm -hmm. her friends and said, I would like to not have sex anymore. And we don't see a letter where the guy says, and fuck you, bitch. I'm not talking. No, he's like, okay. And then she's like, well, we're not having sex anymore. We're just regular friends now, and he's not putting up a fuss. He's being fine. There's no negative energy from from boy here, but writer is saying, I'm struggling because I am in love with somebody who doesn't love me back, Mm -hmm. and I need to decide, do I stay in friendship proximity to that human, or do I walk away? And that's so hard to do. I remember what I was going to say. Nail it. Well, I want to say what I want to say first. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, good no, job, I do Whitney. remember. I do okay. remember. Okay. Uh, w- writer. <laughs> Thank you. You could do it. Whatever you do, decide. Okay? Nay. Do so with the Nay. intent that this is about you and not about trying to change him. Okay. Okay? Because I know what you may be thinking, because I've been in similar situations and I've thought this. Oh. That like, okay, well, I'm going to put up these boundaries. And then when I put up these boundaries, it will influence this other person. And then they will change right. to what I want them to and be. And I'm really just trying to control the master. Exactly. Plan. Yeah, good point. Exactly. So when you set these boundaries, remember, you're setting these boundaries for you with the understanding that this could be it and that we're, we could be done. But you're not trying to change the other person. That's awesome. He's adding more instruments. I know. I was like, is that a violin? It's actually kind of getting good. <laughs> he created a song. Like there's a sunset in the background. Oh, we're, we're really close to having new, uh, a new, a new uh, song. song. Oh, yeah. That was almost the logo. I like yeah. it. Well, yeah. Uh, what's the word instead of boundaries? A, uh, I'm blanking ultimatum. on it. Ultimatum. Yeah, yeah, an ultimatum. Yeah, it's not an ultimatum. It's a boundary. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I was young, like a teenager-ish, um, I had a situation similar, not quite as in in depth as this writer, but it was very much what you were saying, Nick, where I was like, oh, I really like hanging around this person. We had been friends. And then it's like, oh, you know what? I think I like them more. And I told them and they were like, oh, you know, I really, I really like you, but like, not like that. I think we should remain siblings. (laughs) Just going to let you sit with that one. (laughs) <laughs> Poor siblings <laughs> Hundred grand a bowl <laughs> Liquid Gold <laughs> We snort. grew up sharing oh a bedroom <laughs> I really hate y'all <laughs> In Texas Pew pew <laughs> I wanted to get past that first line. Uh, <laughs> I was never going to make it past that first line. 
This show has gone completely off the rails. You started that. (laughs) (laughs) You started us in the gutter, and we just stayed there. Mine was just an observation. (laughs) That's mine too. Oh god. Oh my gosh. Served a navy battleship filled with horses. But no, my 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 uh, boundary I set, but it felt very true to me. Was like when you put that tape line across the middle of the bedroom. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you, Jake. <laughs> it's not gonna end well. Okay. <laughs> Anna, do me a favor. See this little deer yeah, just yeah, swivel that around yeah, for me, please. Yeah, yep. and he's no, yep, 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 just, yep, just like that. Thank you. Just look yep, at me. That's yeah. what yeah. you get. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was my boundary. And I truly felt that I can't, my verbiage was, I cannot just be friends with you because I like you more than that. So if you don't want to tell me and I'm going to peace out, you know, I'll be over here. You do you. It's all good. Um, but if, if you, you know, want more than, than I want that. Yeah. And so, and that had come after there was at least uh, like, I don't know, at least two other conversations about about you know liking each other or not and so that's where i can really relate to this writer and um it's it's hard to get to that point but i think that's where you get where you're just like this feels kind of like torture because yeah and i I think you're within your rights and and in your story writer story you're within your rights to say this isn't going to be okay for me Mm -hmm. i like also framing it as and you're not a bad person no you're being honest with me and i i appreciate that yeah but i can't do this but i I also want to imagine what it's like to be that friend where somebody you really care about and you are really connected with is saying, Hey, I need more than this. And then you're like, God damn it. I don't want to lose you as my friend. Yeah. Like we, what we have is a really cool bond. You mean and from the guy's perspective? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like it, it could be a guy and I could definitely okay. see scenarios where it's the girl and yeah. she's like, I don't want to lose you. You're my best friend. But if I don't become your girlfriend, I am going to lose you. And how do I feel about that? Okay. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> like that's, so I was going to ask this earlier I mean, I know you're like, oh, the guy's not an asshole. I don't want to go that that route. And he's not. But like where when eventually is there some responsibility on the guy being like, oh, yeah, you've told me you really like me. You want more. And yeah, I'm just still going to like, I don't know. So I, I'll tell you, it's it, in this if scenario, they're really friends. That's socially, not he's got very, very few options. Right. Because if, if he's hooking up with his friend and they started off with this consensual, no strings attached, this is for fun thing. And yeah. then she catches feelings. She's like, I have feelings for you. He has very few options because if he goes, OK, we should stop seeing each other. We should stop being romantic because I don't have feelings for you. Let's be platonic. Then it's like, OK, it was all well and good until I got feelings. Then you fucking cut me off and threw me away. And it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, what do you want to do? Like, how about I'm available for whatever you want to do? And she's like, I want you to be my boyfriend. Like, I can't do that. And she's like, okay, well, then I don't want to lose you. So we're going to stay at this. I don't know what his move is supposed to be. <clears throat> no, it it's, can very much be that first thing, in my opinion. To I say, know. I'm making this decision on your behalf. Not on your behalf. We're going to end. But your own behalf, too, because you are kind of, that to me is almost like leading on a little bit. If you're really friends with this person and right. care about them, you're not just a booty I'm call a feminist. or something. I think you can let her make her own choices. It's both, though. If you're friends, it's both. Like, okay. in my opinion, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, a yeah, good they're example. both responsible for their relationship. Like, yeah. whatever their relationship looks like, they are both responsible for mm. it. Yeah, I like how that's worded. Um, th- thank you, Whitney. You're welcome. Yeah, that's all you're getting from me. Stare at those deer eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you look at those. <laughs> I, I apologize. I know you guys are having a serious conversation, but I just, I just keep thinking. <laughs> You're thinking of horse siblings being the first hit song for seafood, seafood sugar cookies. Horse siblings. Horse siblings. There's nothing with semen and seafood sugar cookies in there. <laughs> like, so this is going on the album the then. This is, this oh, is one of our tracks. On the album. Yeah, the, the horse siblings. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> We it's had like a sex romantic song. while living in the same <laughs> paddock. <laughs> or, if you will, pad dick. <laughs> Writer, this is a tough one. I mean, okay, so how do we do we all agree that if you if you can't stop the feelings, which of course you can't, I, yeah. I wanna... then you need to, to claim space for yourself. Yes, is, I agree we, with that completely. But then the question is how? Uh, I do want to back up too. This sounds like I'm blaming the guy 
uh, more than I want to. Uh, but the guy knows uh, earlier, like the, your profession of love was not the first time that this guy thought mm. about, oh, hey, she's getting into me. Okay. Yeah. Like that, that you wasn't. Don't, you don't think he was caught off guard? I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But, yeah. he's, uh, but then he's not obligated to lie. He no, should tell his no, truth. No, certainly not. But I, I really wish, for the sake of the friendship, I wish that something had been done yes. earlier. Yeah, because yes. now is like now is awfully late. Now, yeah. especially when it comes to saving the the friendship relationship part of this. Yeah, yeah. they're in a uh, tough spot. And like, it's going to take openness on on both of your parts, and and drawing some very clear boundaries, all of those types of things. I don't know. Question for the room: Do you think there is a way? For writer to keep the friendship, no. and release the feelings. <laughs> what do you think? Is it possible to somehow? That's a personal opinion, but I don't, I don't think they go away. I don't. I, how do you stop being in love with somebody? Yeah. Like, if you want to say possible, <laughs> like fine, I, possible, yeah. likely. Yeah. Uh, not, okay, not let me likely. tell you about how I used to feel about MC Hammer. Okay. We don't have time for that. Defined right? <laughs> me as a human. Now, barely think of him. You know, that's love to you. It was about a single song that played on Jim's cassette that wasn't "Can't Touch This." Well, there was the B side, which there. God damn, I can't remember what his second song was. He had two. It wasn't as good. Oh, Hammer Time! Fucking yeah, Hammer Time! Yeah, yeah. this is the way we roll. Oh, don't you start! Don't don't discography me. Come on, god damn. This, you were well, talking you about you were talking about the wheelhouse well, of our generation now. <laughs> getting, sir. In, getting into water too deep, youngin. Yep. <laughs> so do you think that was you my can first cassette and my first CD? Untangle oh, that? I don't know. Yeah, that I, entanglement? No, I, mean, I don't a, know. Again, like here's the thing: is it, it, when you try to be friends, even if they were like if they had a romantic relationship, okay, which they didn't, but like it, one person did, the other person did not. What happens when he finds a girlfriend? Exactly. Yeah. What role are you going to play there? And also, I think that's going to be hard to watch. It's going to be hard yeah. to sit on the sidelines and watch that. Yep. It's also going to be really hard for her to find uh, to to move on with mm -hmm. him there every day. Yeah. Like if y'all, yeah. if, if all, if the person you're hanging out with is, is this guy, you're missing all opportunities. The time, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. If I, I if like, I were your buddy, if, if, I bet I would say. You you gotta not hang out with this guy for a bit. Even yeah, I was gonna say even if it's just a break, even yeah. if it's just like you know what, you know, well I'll, I'll see where I'm at in a couple months. That's it. You know. So writer is asking us toward the end is saying like how do do I do this? Do I cut him off cold turkey, um, or just deal with the pain that comes from having him in my life while I'm suffering? So I think I think most of us are aligning on the side of exit plan. Yeah, um, but More then this question of cold turkey: <laughs> Is there a conversation? Is there a hey? I exist, but like we're not going to do this daily simulating relationship level connection of friendship. Like that's it. Actually, that that that's really it. Like okay. the simulating of the relationship widen the gap. Maybe that's. I think that might be causing some problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. the right, yeah writer you say, says not cold turkey. Take the ramp. Like that's you say it. exit slowly. Yeah, I don't think you have to say like let's never speak again starting right now. Okay. But like, yeah, let's take a little break. Because uh, yeah, that, I hadn't even thought about that. That is, that's I think you're exactly on it. Uh, yeah. Simulating the whole relationship there, that's what's going to keep you from being able to move on. Yeah, that's what's going to keep you from being able to move forward. And the friendship um, is so close, even without the sex. And also, like, if you intimate. keep on, e even if it is like, even if the ultimate goal is to still get back with this guy, yeah, a as you end this this moment of the relationship. Uh, even if you say like, "Hey, let's take a break," and in six months, man, I'm I'm gonna come for you, and I'm I'm gonna fucking win you back in six months, hmm. and because right now neither of you can move on from where you're at. Like you're you're in a you spot can't see right a different now. Way. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And so like continuing on with what you have, his feelings aren't gonna change. Kind of sounds like you're saying you need at least like a detox. Yeah. 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 I like that idea. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe do a lot of drugs. Ooh, <clears> that's probably of detox. well. If you really want to fucking. <laughs> You want to come play hardball, fucking date his horse. You know, that's, he gets jealous. Then all of a sudden. <laughs> if he has any attractive family members. Oh, yeah. Horse yeah. Oh, the first thing you do. Yeah. Like if he has a twin brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just fucking rail that guy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's how you do Happy it. Happy fucking birthday. Some good advice. <laughs>
right here. You right. right in for the quality of Good our looking advice. dad. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus even better, Grandpa. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> just take a job at the nursing home. <laughs> you just find a copy of this family you. tree. You're like, today I'm an arborist. <laughs> you didn't love me. <laughs> oh, Ryder, this is a tough one. But uh, you know what? I think we're all rooting for you to go through some kind of exiting plan. I don't think harsh, anybody likes you face. sitting there suffering anyway. Yeah. No. That's tough. I don't like you in proximity to this. It didn't work out. I think you're handling it well. I mean, the way you write this letter... You're not villainizing. You're not unkind. You don't sound bitter. Yeah. Um, you sound like you are navigating something complex and that you've already made really big choices that look like boundary setting to see if that would fix it, to see if you'd be OK. And now you're noticing, no, authentically, I still have feelings, even though we've right. you know reduced this to platonic. Um, and now I need to make a next decision. And I respect you for that. It's a very hard decision. Yeah. But and I think it's a I'm very self-aware. Uh, the whole letter is very self-aware. <laughs> very self-aware. But yeah, I'm with Whitney. I really think that I don't see a way that you can maintain this friendship, even if you can demote it to like, I don't know, like I see like her a once lot. in a while. At least, yeah. I mean, maybe that, maybe you don't have to cut this person off like they're dead to you, but. But like, be like, hey, do you need something? Text me, but I need, yeah. I need like. I'm going to need some space. Yeah. 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 Now, good question, no. writer. You don't want to end up like Whitney and her brother. No. Thanksgiving is so fucking awkward. Yeah. It's <laughs> just damn terrible. It. Anna, get the deer. Get the deer again. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As we wrap up the show, I want to remind you, you can sign up at yes. patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad-free a day early, as well as enjoy our live chat Discord community and our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants. Uh, this week, I added a fifth installment of questions every therapist should ask themselves really interesting uh, series based on the writings of Carl Rogers, one of the greats. Check it out, patreon.com slash therapy. We've got some new friends in the therapy party. Who joined us, Nick? We got a new therapod, Jesse Miller. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, we got a new therodactyl, eight-armed praying mantis. Whoa. Yeah. And, <laughs> and hot off the press. <laughs> oh. As we were recording, or a little bit ago, I think before we started recording, we got another new Theradactyl. <gasps> Hell yeah, we did. Um, Adam, and his last name, Jim and I have both mispronounced, and he let us have it at ScoopFest. Ribchick? For... Yes! <laughs> and you got it right. Uh, Say it again. Ribchick. It's Ribchick? Ribchick? Yeah. Ribchick. It's not Ribiznik? I guess not. Every time. <laughs> ah, fuck that guy. <laughs> Guess what? Hey, I read the fucking names, Adam. Actually, no, I you remember. got on the Nick's list. Yeah, you do therodactyls. That's probably well, why he, he fucking did it. Now he did. Yeah, yeah, he probably just threw more money because he was sick and tired of me fucking mispronouncing <laughs> his name. <laughs> so he's like, that's it. I'm, I'm going to Nick's, Nick's pronunciation. Thank you, Adam. Uh, appreciate your long-term support. Of course, we also want to thank our therapy partners. Oh, wait, before we do, um, reviews, update on reviews. There's we have more? officially passed 100. Woo! We are at 101 reviews. Our average score now is 4.7. Okay. Uh, we do have a good handful of one and two stars. Fuck Yikes. you guys Yikes. in the neck. Uh, but all They're the people. They no, all those people Jim. fucking left us. <laughs> like, yeah. <all> okay. <laughs> Did you read the one? No, also, you uh, need the one and two stars because it shows that the reviews are actually real. That's true. That's, oh, fair. that's true. Yeah. 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 I never trust something that's all five stars. Yeah. Okay. So I do a lot of trainings. As you know, oh, yeah, my yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. And we did, and we. <laughs> he runs a lot of trainings as well. At, uh, oh. at, at the end, everybody fills out a form. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? The feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single time, I always get one person who does all strongly disagree. Oh, Fuck yeah. no. Top to bottom. Oh. Strongly did they get it in reverse? On every. Just to asshole you. But here's the thing they also. Never provide any other feedback. Yeah, no, it's oh. always anonymous. Yeah, yeah. it's blanks yeah. on all the comments. Uh, Ways you can improve? Nothing. Fuck you. Oh. You'll never put anything in down. To my great credit, anytime I have attended CEUs that you have taught, I have never done that. And I have always fucking thought about it. And oh, I, I know. Just, I've thought <laughs> about writing <laughs> heinous shit. Just like, 
<laughs> just really random references that your boss would eventually look at and be like, wait, what? Like, I didn't appreciate the Holocaust jokes. No. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, uh, to my enormous credit, I never have. So well, good for you. Wait, no, take the high road. Me. Yeah, no, you're fucking welcome. I absolutely <laughs> thought about it. Just loaded gun on the table, never used it. But um, then you realized you have more to lose than I do. I realize you will beat me when up. it comes like, to when it you'll comes just to beat me up really quickly, and that'll when be the it end comes of it. to leaving negative reviews. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You my win. career will survive. Yeah, yeah. You can burn me down <laughs> way faster. Yeah, you will cockroach at the end of World War Three. Yeah. yeah, you'll be fine. No, I'll be you'll right. crawl out of the tunnel. Uh, but yeah, so thank you everybody that got us over a hundred. We're at a hundred. One, no new ones to read. Uh, we just got a lot of silent warriors in there jumping in and giving us those fives. If you listen to the show, if we're part of your weekly life, if you are an Apple user, take a second, jump in there really quick, just hit the five button. If you want to say a few words and make me read it out loud, go for it. Um, we will read anything that is five stars. I will just do that. So you can that's write out your entire entire memoir. Memoir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had a lot as of as long as you label it as a, a memoir. Drops, this means yes. at least a hundred people have listened to this podcast. At least one hundred one. One hundred one. Yeah, not all of them liked it, but okay. one hundred one at least on <laughs> iTunes. So, thank you, uh, that crowd. We do appreciate it. It goes a long way for us. And uh, we want to thank our Thera partners, the benevolent, revered, generous, and flagrantly pro-therapy diehards who love you all so much that they give till it hurts, Dirty Bee and Picket. And we want to thank our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, the Thera producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Myra, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard fucking Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley, Slap in your face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar, Falcon Scoop, Matt Lisa Tangeman, Heyo, Oscar Swanrose, A Sunny Boy, Slurpy Kai, Motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, Han Marie, Andrew Langmead, and Emma Kane, and our friend Anna, who joined us in studio, Yay! who is shocked to realize I name all those people from memory and I'm not reading them from my phone. It's true. It's a different show in person, isn't it? Really? Yeah. The magic. Yeah, you realize how hard we work. Show, oh. Oh. oh! Are you sad right. you didn't get life coached? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yep. Oh, and Jim even got life coached. Oh, oh well. I did. Oh. Yeah. Too bad oh. we missed it. Yeah, tough shit, Anna. Oh, nothing to be done. Oh, come on. Nothing to be done. Come on. Oh. You can't summon it. You nothing can't, to be done. You just, <laughs> nothing uh. can be done about it. <laughs> <laughs> My phone number and even on my business card. Yep. Oh. Maybe maybe the after show. Maybe yeah. if you stick around for maybe. the uh, at last questions, <laughs> you have a shot. If you would like to hear this episode uncut and unedited. And, and why, why wouldn't, wouldn't you? you? And yeah, turn around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, he's giving her his card now. And enjoy yeah. our spontaneous side projects. Go to patreon.com slash therapy. And thank you for supporting mental health. That's all the time we got for this week's session. We want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast. And thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share the show with the world. Tag us on the socials when you do. We're at Pod Therapy Guys on Instagram, Threads, and Twitter, and it's slash Pod Therapy on Facebook. Don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. Do you want to submit a question to the show? Ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerman. I'm Jim. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what, so what's confused. my name? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I was Jim. I don't know what to do, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? I'll throw you a couple. All right, yeah. throw a couple. One's about Mr. Ed. Which luxury fashion brand famously creates high-end equestrian?